Good morning, everybody. And thanks for joining us this morning. This is Tom Albrick from the uh, University of Buffalo Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership. And we're uh, happy to be with you today to talk about uh, multipliers. So let me jump right in with you. First, I'd like to start by thanking our sponsor, the Bonadeo Group. So thank you to the Bonadeo Group for uh, sponsoring the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, uh, Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership and allowing us to bring content like this to you. So today, before I start, I want to just talk a, a little bit about um, what we're going to do. I rarely do book reviews or content on here. Most of the time we do original content, but the work of Liz Wiseman and the Wiseman Group really grabbed my attention years ago, and I've been thinking a lot about it. I first believe I first heard her at a Gazelle Summit, if I'm not, not mistaken, and um, she did some work with uh, Gazelle's Growth Institute and, of course, is a, is a well-known speaker consultant in this area. And I think it's even more important today, her work, as, as we look at our companies in the world of change that we're living in and we realize that perhaps people are our only competitive advantage left. So that's why I wanted to share this with you today. Um, and, and just to be clear, we don't work with the Wiseman Group, although maybe we should try to be doing that. We don't benefit financially from this at all. And um, I just want to share a lot of their content with you because it really resonates with me. And I will give you lots of resources at the end where you can reach out if, you, if you'd like to learn more um, about their work. And also they have a ton of resources which I'll give you at the end if you're interested in learning more. So a, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is based on the, on the book, The Multipliers, um, which was written by Liz Wiseman with uh, Greg McCown. And their book really came about, they talk about this observation that they uh, noticed where some leaders seem to amplify intelligence while, while other leaders drain that. And they asked the question, why is that? How is that possible? And they found that some leaders managed to make everyone else around them smarter, would be one way to say it, and other leaders seem to drain intelligent and suck the capability out of their people. So when you read the book and you look into some of their work, they really looked at, at this question. If, if we uh, assume that intelligence is the ability to solve complex problems, adapt to new environments, learn new skills, and accomplish difficult tasks, they asked a question around that. Why, what are the vital few differences between intelligence diminishers or people that we that are our bosses or that we work with that take that away from us and intelligence multipliers are those people that get more and more out of us so let me just define that really quickly again for you so if you think of a diminisher as a leader who diminishes the intelligence in the people around you or gets less out of you might be another way to say it and multipliers are leader multipliers are leaders who amplify or multiply the intelligence of their team and the people around them. So if you were to just think about your own life, I want you to think about you know, some of your stories and think about leaders that you've had before and think about a diminisher leader, again, somebody that caused you to give less than your all when working with them. Um, you know, Somebody who maybe uh, there's a lot of great people that were on your team, but perhaps work was getting stalled all the time or you felt like you're being held back, um, really just not giving everything that you had and, and really only giving maybe a fraction of yourself. So think about that for a minute. What is it that this diminisher, diminishing leader did? What are some of the characteristics that you might say that you, when you look at their behavior, what was that like? And I want you to just think about that person for a minute. Do you have somebody in mind? So think about that. Now, now I want you to answer these questions for yourself. So what did your diminisher leader do? What is it that that person did? How do they act around you? How do they make you feel? And how would you describe their behavior? And, and think of this in a really short number of words. And you, and you might come up with words like, I've heard people talk about, they micromanage me. Um, they were really perhaps inconsistent. They reacted very erratically 
um, sometimes people talk about a smothering boss. Some people say that there's a lack of trust with this type of leader. So thinking about that leader, diminishing leader for a minute, can you think of one word that describes how you felt around your diminisher leader? So pick one word that could really sum that up for you. And, and what would that word be? Is it something like um, lack of trust, which is obviously multiple words, but is it inconsistent? Is it smothering? How did that person make you feel? And just, just keep that in the back of mind for a second. Now let's be a little bit more positive. I want you to think about a multiplier leader in your life. So think about someone who caused you to bring out the best in you, to want to do more work, your best thinking, who helped you progress in your, in your career perhaps. What is it that that person did? What, what were some of their behaviors and, and how much of your intelligence or your knowledge, your skills, did you give that person? And another way that they talk about this in the book is how much of your capability was that leader um, getting or were you giving to the organization under that leadership? So once you have that person in mind, I want you to think about what did your multiplier leader do? What is it that, that this person did? How do they act around you? How do they make you feel? How would you describe their behavior? We, we talked about this um, at an open house event oh, a few weeks ago and people, people said things like, I felt more trusted. Um, they showed interest in me, they listened to me. They would sometimes push me out of my comfort zone. Some people said they made me believe that I could actually do more. So if you could sum up in one word that describes how you felt around this multiplier leader, what might that word be? So the obviously the opposite of diminishing words. So things like trustworthy, people will talk about trust. People will talk about the word empowered or purposeful or best. So these are just a few of the words that you might think about with a multiplier leader. So the research went, went on to ask, how much of your intelligence did your diminisher leader get from you? So I want you to just maybe jot this down or think about it for a minute. So back to your diminisher leader, how much of your intelligence were they giving you? Zero to 20, or were you giving them? Zero to 20%, 21 to 40%, et cetera. So I want you to, to look at that and, and think about it for a little bit and, and keep a number in mind for you. And we have some research statistics I'll show you in a little bit. So if we look at those diminishing leaders, another thing that, that uh, the Weizen Group talks about a lot is this concept of what was a diminishing leader thinking? So what, what were their assumptions? If you could get in their head, what did your diminishing leader think to be true? Were they thoughtfully focused on diminishing your intelligence or was it accidental in nature? So some people might say things like they thought they were being helpful or they thought they were actually doing a great job or maybe some of these leaders thought, hey, if I'm not here, they can't do it without me. So now let's go to uh, your multiplying leaders for a second and think about what part or how much of your intelligence did your multiplying leader get from you? So the same question here. So think back to that multiplying leader you identified earlier. What do you think was their assumption? If you could get in their head, what did your multiplier leader think to be true? What did they believe about you and your capabilities? Some people will say, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but they believed they could do a lot more. They saw my potential. They believed in my potential. So here's, here's some conclusions from the research that will be the beginning of a little bit shocking to you, I think. 
So on the left, we have diminishing diminishers or diminishing leaders. On the right, we have a summary of their research on multipliers. So diminishers, what diminishing leaders see are people won't figure it out with me. What multiplier leaders see is people are smart and will figure it out on their own. So you, it's really clear the difference there, right? What diminishers do, they empire build, they hoard, they underutilize talent, they can be tyrannical, they create stress that stops thinking in their teams, they know it all, they tell people what to do, they're the decision maker, they decide first and then debate with their team when they've already made up their mind. They can be a micromanager where they manage every single detail. The flip side of that, a multiplier leader tend to be talent magnets. They attract and they optimize talent. Um, they tend to be liberators. They create space for best thinking. And challengers, they extend and stretch challenges to you as a team member. They tend to be a debate maker where they debate with the team, then decide. And they tend to be investors. They instill ownership and accountability into your work. So they'll hand off something and give it to you but hold you accountable at the same time. So give you the freedom to do your work, but hold you accountable. Remember back to a question about how much of your intelligence or your capability did you give those leaders? Um, what the research showed was that diminishers get 40% of your capability, whereas multipliers get 95% of your capability. So I think it's important that we think about this difference between a diminishing leader and a multiplier leader. And what I would love for all of us to think about as business owners is what type of leader are we? And do we exhibit any of these traits of a diminisher leader? So this is a, a quote directly from, from Liz Wiseman. People come to work wanting to give 100% of their capability, but when they learn a boss doesn't need it or see it, or is so enamored with his or her own capability, then people perceive that they are not needed. Pretty powerful. So again, as leaders, are we multiplying or are we diminishing? So the next area I wanna talk about is, is this area where they identified um, accidental diminisher tendencies. So these are some ways that you may be accidentally diminishing your team. And I want you, as we go through these, do you see yourself in here in any of these um, as we go through the, the tendencies? And the other thing I really wanna stress here is accidentally diminishing. So it appears that many times what, what could be construed as our strengths become accidentally diminishing to other people on your team. So it's not all, all the time that you're, you are, are tending to want to diminish your team or planning to diminish, diminish your team or shutting them off, but that you accidentally are doing this. So this is the, the main thing that I'd like you to, to take away from today's short talk is to just think about, do I have any of these accidental diminishing tendencies as the Weissman Group des describes it? So the first they talk, about is the idea guy. And, and this is quite frankly, probably the most diminishing tendency, hopefully accidental diminishing tendency that I personally have. And it's common in many entrepreneurs. So your intention may be for your ideas to stimulate ideas in others, but instead you can overwhelm others. And what will happen is your intention is to, to stimulate ideas in them but you cause them to shut time, shut down, or spend time chasing your idea of the day. It can leave you, leave your people thinking you simply chase endless ideas. Entrepreneurs can be super, super good at the chaos of starting something and all the craziness that goes with that, but it can give your team a real fit. So they talk about workarounds with each of these. So do you see yourself in here? Do you see yourself as possibly being the idea guy or gal? And a simple workaround that they talk about is if you have this tendency, you can create a holding tank. Before you share any new ideas, stop and ask yourself if you want the people who for work for you to take action. If not, hold off sharing and save your idea for later. So, so don't cause the stress in people. 
And for those of you that are really interested in this, no need to take notes. I will give you a link to this resource where you can download it directly when we get complete here. So a second diminishing tendency that they saw was what they call always on. So your intention, if you're an always on person, is to create infectious energy, but the outcome is that you consume all the space and others just tune you out. If this is you, if this is one of your diminishing tendencies, you're always present, always contributing, hand up first, um, going out of your way to, to take care of things and make things happen. A simple workaround here is, they talk about is say it just once. So instead of repeating yourself for emphasis, try, and, try saying things just once and create a reason for others to chime in and build on the idea. Set expectations in a group setting for other people to speak so you are not the one that is always on. A third diminishing tendency, the rescuer. So we see this a, a lot with leaders and the, and the rescuers, people with this tendency think they're helpful they often have a big heart and they truly want people to be successful and they want to protect their people's reputation. So your intention, if you have this diminishing tendency, is to really want to help. That's the intention typically behind it. But your team's experience is, but if they're being constantly rescued all the time, they're feeling like they can't do it themselves, they're struggling Liz says, done with the best of intentions, this often is, but deeply, deeply diminishing. So the outcome is that your people will become dependent on you, which in the end, ultimately weakens, not strengthens their reputation. So if you see the rescuer as one of your diminishing tendencies, the, the simple workaround they rec recommend is ask for their fix. When someone brings you a problem or signals a need for help, don't jump right in and, and answer or solve the problem for them. Remind yourself that the person that's asking probably already has a solution. You could ask them instead, how do you think we should solve it? So put it back on them. Don't rescue. Help them to understand that they already probably have a solution and you can help bring that out of them versus giving it to them. So again, another, another one for those of you that are small business owners and, and entrepreneurs, the, the pace setter. The pace setter sets the example, driven by achievement, leading by example. So the intention here is to set a high standard for quality or, or to pace your team. But the outcome is that your team members become spectators or worse yet, they just give up when they can't keep up. So their experience often becomes um, one of uh, observing and watching versus participating when the pace setter is too strong. So a simple workaround that, the, that they recommend is to stay within sight. So if you're a pace setter, don't get way out in front of your team. Stay within sight. If you have a tendency to pull out ahead, remind yourself to stay within sight so people don't give up or get lost. Make sure you stay within a distance that someone could catch up if they see you out front. So you just don't want to get too far ahead of people. And again, no need to write these down. Um, the Wiseman Group has a really great summary sheet that takes all this that I'm telling you into a one-page um, summary for you. So the rapid responder. So here's your intention as a rapid responder. Um, your intention is to keep your organization moving fast, really fa fast. But the outcome is that your organization moves super, super slowly because of the traffic jam of too many decisions and changes. So the simple workaround they, they suggest is to set a mandatory waiting period. If you see yourself as a rapid responder, wait for 24 hours be re before responding to, for instance, an email that falls into someone else's job category. Give that person the first right of response, so to speak. So give a little bit of a waiting period. Another diminishing tendency or accidental diminishing tendency, the, the optimist. The person that is the leader that has this overabundance of optimism. 
Your intention? Your intention is to create belief that the team can do it. Unfortunately, the outcome is that your people wonder if you appreciate the struggle and the possibility of failure that is part of their everyday work life. So a simple workaround here, if you see yourself using this diminishing um, tendency is to signal the struggle. So before offering your boundless enthusiasm, start by acknowledging how hard the work is. Let people know what I'm asking you to do is hard. Success isn't guaranteeing, isn't a guarantee. So really acknowledging the struggle is real for many people in their, in their everyday work. And the protector, another diminishing tendency that we often, often see, I've seen a lot of this with small, small business owners, you don't let people even get into trouble, so to speak, if you're the protector. And uh, this is how um, I saw a presentation um, by the Wiseman Group talk about this. And, I, and, I, and I, they use similar pictures and I wanted to kind of repeat it because I think it's a, a, a perfect example of this. So your intention here, if you're a protector, is keep, to keep people safe from the political forces in the organization. But here's the outcome. And I love this metaphor. So the outcome is that people don't learn to fend for themselves and they just wait for you to jump in. So when I saw these similar pictures picture shown in a seminar saying um, they protect people from hardship and danger in politics like this banyan tree that provides shade and protection, but nothing grows underneath it. I thought that she had the perfect example here of this um, this, this tree that is, you know, vibrant, vigorous, growing, but underneath it, nothing else can survive if you're the protector. So what's a, what's a workaround here with the protector? One of the best workarounds with the protector is to, what they call expose and inoculate, expose your team members to harsh realities in small doses so they can learn from their mistakes and develop strength. So protecting people doesn't help people grow. It's how do you expose them and inoculate them to, to be able to um, be better at their jobs and what they do every day. And then the strategist or the visionary. So entrepreneurial companies that are a little bit more mature, the entrepreneur often becomes the visionary or the, um, the person holding the flag up where we're headed in the future, which is great. It's a role that we certainly need in companies. Your intention here is to create a compelling reason to move beyond what we see as the everyday status quo, but the outcome is that your people defer up to you and second guess the boss rather than looking to find answers. So in a sense, they, they work by having blinders on, knowing you're gonna do it. So the simple workaround is don't com complete the puzzle. As you paint a picture of the future, leave sections for your team to complete. So your job is to frame up the puzzle by establishing the why and the what, but let your team fill in the how. So another way to think about this is, we've done a few talks around strategic planning, is making key people part of the strategic planning process, not just shoving the strategic plan down their throat would be another way to think about this. And then one other diminishing tendency is the, and we all know somebody like this or the perfectionist. So, and you know if you're that person out there. The intention here is to help people produce outstanding work that they're proud of, but the outcome is often that people feel criticized um, or become disheartened and stop trying. So a suggested workaround for this is simple workaround is define the standards. So upfront, define the standards of excellence. Let, no pe let people know what outstanding looks like for your company and your team and define the criteria for what completeness looks like. And then ask your team to self-assess by the standards that you set. So again, all of these intentions and outcomes are available on a summary sheet. Here's the accidental diminisher tendencies put together. So these are nine of them. They're, they talk about other ones also, but this is what we went over. Idea guy, always on, rescuer, pace setter, rapid responder, optimist, protector, strategist, perfectionist. So understand that you likely 
in your strengths, in a sense, have some of these diminishing tendencies. And I would just ask you, as you're looking at this, think about what's your biggest accidental diminisher tendency. And, and in a sense, this makes, you might say that this is also your biggest vulnerability as a leader. So having these tendencies doesn't necessarily make you a diminisher, but it means that you're vulnerable to being a diminisher. So being aware of this is really, really important. It, it's important that your team knows about these and that they talk about it and they probably have meetings about it um, to, to be able to talk through these things. Well, guess what's really happening? They, they talk about this in, um, in a, again, I think it was a Growth Institute presentation I was watching where they talk about, guess what? You may not be talking about these with your team, but your team is having meetings and they're talking about them and you're just not present at them. So again, I want you to just really think about these and be aware about it. The key here is to know what your vulnerability is and talk about it with your team ahead of time. Um, you don't need to be hushed. It doesn't have to be in shameful terms or anything. It should be done openly. And that's the conversation that you need to have in order to really start to take these on. Because if we are, understand that we all have accidental diminisher tendencies, Again, which in my opinion seems to sometimes come with what some people might call some of our strengths can become diminishers to others if we're not really aware of it. We want to think about these and we want to try to mitigate them or at least be aware of them because here's what some of the research shows about what multipliers get. So if we can, if we can be aware of these and think about how to become a multiplier leader by removing or diminishing some of our accidental diminisher tendencies, I want to show you what the research shows that you can get. Multipliers, they talk about create genius. People actually get smarter around them. Who wouldn't want a smarter team around them? Multipliers leverage their resources better. They receive two times more capability and productivity from their team members. Who wouldn't want this? So what do multipliers see versus diminishers? So multipliers have very different assumptions is what the, um, this content really talks about. The different assumptions are that intelligence grows through engagement, the collective is smarter than the individual, and the assumption comes into it with the assumption that people want to be utilized. So they came to the conclusion that here are five things that multipliers do very differently. And I want you to think about, do you do these things? And if not, how might you do these things? So do you create space for best thinking? Do you have time set aside for thinking where people can work on things? Do you have creative problem solving sessions? Do you have times for strategic thinking as a team? Do you extend challenges? So do you challenge your team and not do everything for them, but let them recognize all the capabilities that they have and allow them to use those capabilities? Multiplier leaders attract and optimize talent. So having great talent often attracts great talent. Having a business that has a really clear purpose and a really clear about their why will often attract people that believe in what you do, which will then attract more. But at the same time, if we're aware of this, we're also working to optimize the talent that we have. So one thing I like to talk about a lot with companies that we work with is, I think, especially with some of our younger people, we think about how are we going to keep them in our company? The reality is that people are going to have 14 jobs be, by the time they reach 40 years old in today's society. And maybe a better way to think about this instead of how do we keep people is how do we help people improve their talents in search of their next opportunity. And I think when you do that, you're not asking people to leave, but you're asking people to stay and people tend to stay longer because you're helping them optimize their talent um, personally, which allows them to think about what the next steps are. And while you're helping them, optimize things, they tend to stay longer because they're getting what they need in the process of, de of developing their careers. The other thing, other couple things multipliers do differently is they debate decisions. Um, they don't necessarily rule like a dictator, but they ask for input and ask for opinion. 
That's not to say that as a leader, you're not going to have to make tough decisions sometimes, but the team is included in decisions. But they, the, and the fifth thing, which we have talked about in other webinars before is instilling accountability. And I know a lot of small business owners hate to have critical conversations, hate to hold people accountable. And we always assume, many of us assume that people learn through osmosis. So it's not good enough just to extend challenges. It also has to be with some type of accountability around it. So think about clear direction um, with freedom for your team to seek out the best way to where they're going to use their talents, but at the same time, some form of accountability built in to make sure that things are, are being done properly. And we have to, we have to be a, able to hold people accountable or none of this tends to work. So this is a summary slide. And again, you can download this content. These are the five multiplier disciplines, which we talked a little bit. I, I mentioned some of these as we were going through the uh, diminishing tendencies as workarounds. I, I kind of brought some of these in. But if you think of the diminisher, there's the tyrant who creates a climate of fear and judgment that has a chilling effect on people's thinking and working. The multiplier opposite of that would be the liberator who creates a climate of safety and freedom that both invites and demands people's best thinking and work. The diminisher, one other type they talk about, is a know-it-all who just gives directives that show how much they know as a leader. The multiplier leader would look, would become the challenger, defines an opportunity that causes people to stretch and reach for new goals. The diminisher leader, the empire builder, hoards resources and underutilizes talent. The multiplier leader, the talent magnet, attracts and deploys talent at its highest point of contribution. So I think it's really critical there at its highest point of contribution. Make sure again that we're developing our team's talent, that we're looking at all the capabilities that they have and even helping them um, understand the capabilities that they have that they maybe don't even see in themselves. Sometimes it only happens when we help push people a little bit beyond what would be their normal comfort zone to show them that they can build the confidence that they can do the next level of whatever it is that they're interested in doing. Um, and then again, the, those people that are the talent magnet multipliers have, when there's a job post, they have a long list of people anxious to come to work with your organization. A diminishing tendency or diminisher, the decision maker who makes centralized abrupt decisions that confuse the organization. Instead, think about the multiplier leader, the debate maker that drives sound decisions through rigorous debate. So rigorous debate requires that everybody be heard. So you have to create an environment where everybody can be heard and everybody is not as, doesn't speak up as easily as everyone else. So you have to be careful to make sure that you create an environment where debate is encouraged um, and that it is ongoing and everybody is included in that. And then finally, the, the diminisher that is the micromanager who drives results through direct management and accountability. Think about the multiplier, the investor, who delivers extraordinary results again and again without direct management. So they ask this question, do you want to be a genius or do you want to be a genius maker? And if you think about the concept of being a multiplier leader, you don't need to be the genius. Look at all the geniuses that are around there and you can help them help make people genius in your organization so that you have multiple geniuses working for you in your organization. So in summary here, how do you become a multiplier leader? So one thing that we they talk about is working the extreme. So if you take the time to identify your personal leadership styles and, and identify where your diminishing tendencies, accidental diminishing tendencies tend to be, you've got to make an effort to develop the two extremes. So one is to bring up your lowest level. So be aware of that and try to bring that up while work on taking your highest level to the next level. So uh, how do you take yourself up to the next level where you have some real strengths while you're recognizing 
where you have some diminishing tendencies, you can bring that up. Focus on what you've learned about being a multiplier. Start there and let the multiplier tendencies become habits. So, um, and excuse the uh, typo with there. The, here's some great resources for you. And again, we don't work directly with this group. I just think highly of this book. I think highly of their, um, the many presentations I've seen them do and um, stuff that I've, I've listened to from the Wiseman Group. Visit the Wiseman Group. They have tons of resources. Some of you may have taken the quiz prior. We pushed this out to you. They have a quiz there that will help you identify your accidental diminishing tendencies. They've got lots of free resources. We don't do any consulting in this area where we don't have specific training, although again, maybe we should, but you can engage a Wiseman Group directly. Here's a, here's a link for some of the many consultants they have. And they also have an opportunity, if you're really interested in this, of getting somebody on your team certified to take it to the next level where you could have somebody on your team yourself get certified or yourself get certified. Some additional resources, of course, there's the book, easy to find, that's available on Amazon. Um, and I gave you these other resources. And then the co-author of the book or contributor to the book was Greg McCown. He has a really um, great slide deck on SlideShare, and I pulled some ideas for this from there. You can see that presentation there. And if we are looking at, at trying to bring um, Liz and or Greg in here for a future retreat for our mastery forum or something else, so if this topic is something you might be interested in learning more in depth from the authors um, or their team, but please let us know because that would encourage us to make the investment and bring them in. So thank you again for joining us this morning. I think we kept it relatively short to about half an hour. We look forward to seeing you in a couple months. So have a great day and uh, best of luck in your businesses.